Welcome back everybody to the channel and I gotta warn you up front just by saying the names of a couple of James Bond movies oof watch out trigger warning All right, so yes, uh, some news just came out about uh, some James Bond movies with the uh, is it the British Film Institute, uh, the BFI, and they added trigger warnings for some of the Bond movies, and um, I'm gonna get right into what they have stated. Um, this or the disclaimer has been issued on behalf of all films featured in the season with those buying tickets being warned that they contain language images or other content that reflect views prevalent in its time, but will cause offense today as they did then is what they say. Uh, BFI's website reads, the titles are included here for historical, cultural, or aesthetic reasons, and these views are in no way endorsed by the BFI or its partners. And um, and then before we discuss which act, which films are actually involved, um, their final bit of their statement that I'll read says, "Whilst we have a responsibility." to preserve films as close to their contemporaneous accuracy as possible, even where they contain language or depiction, which we categorically reject. We also have a responsibility in how we present them to our audiences. The trigger warnings, content warnings that we provide in all our exhi uh, exhibition spaces and online platforms act as guidance that a film or work reflects views of the time in which they were made and which may cause offense. So uh, James Bond films are now being included in being offensive and needing trigger warnings. So first of all is Goldfinger. Goldfinger um, is um, a trigger warning because of a couple of reasons. Now, I never noticed this, to be honest. Um, Objob had a cleft palate, I guess. Uh, I, I actually never even noticed that. Uh, so I guess because of depicting him, giving him that uh, as a villain, I, I don't know, something to do with that. But then also um, because Bond forces himself upon... Um, Mrs. or Miss, Ms. Galore. And now I've even seen certain reviews of, of Goldfinger and, and some of the Bond community talk about that scene in, in Goldfinger where Bond forces himself on Ms. Galore. And uh, the ones that cringe the most about it um, are, are, are a bit of a younger generation. Now, in, in my, back in my day, uh, when, when I was growing up, that was, that was like over dramatic, um, film making is how that, that was usually done. So, you know, the old black and white movies, um, a lot of times, you know, the, the, the male character, he would like grab the woman hold her in his arms and, and he'd, he'd be like, I know you love me. I, you know, you, you, know, you must admit it. And she'd be like, no, no, I will never admit it. I, I don't love you. I don't want anything to do with you. And, and then, you know, then she would turn right around and just be like, oh no, no, I'm, I'm madly in love with you. I can't live without you. And then, you know, it just, you know, then that solidified their love. And, um, you know, it was always overly dramatic. Um, in that kind of a way. Uh, and that was done a lot. That, that, that was done quite often 
to, you know, so, and it wasn't that somebody was forcing themselves on the other person. It was the other person. They were upset that they, they didn't want to admit that they loved this other person or didn't want them to, to know, or they just didn't want to show it to them and that, but they did, you know, they loved them and, and, and it came to a breaking point is, is what it did, you know, just that they, they, it was either, okay, now I have to show my love to them or they're gone forever. Yeah. And so, so rather they, they would begin to reject them and then they had to admit their love for them. I always felt that that's what that scene in Goldfinger did. Now they weren't madly in love, but, um, there was this attraction there. She didn't want to admit that it was there. Um, and um, so, in I mean, in real life, in real life, nobody does that. Nobody really, I mean, no, no sane individual or, or or somebody that respects other people would really do that. Just be like, you know, like, oh, I I don't care what you say. I I know how you feel, and and I'm going to show you how you feel. It's that's not real life. That's over dramatic film making is what that was and that that's how that scene always struck me and all the years growing up i never took that as a model to follow um it w seemed to me obvious to be overly dramatic filmmaking is what it was so but now it comes with a trigger warning because um, we're we're in this generation now that that gets triggered i mean that word is used everywhere oh this triggered me um you can't say that you're going to trigger someone so um the other movie is um you only live twice and apparently this because bond does um japanese face i guess you could call it um, because he he pretends to be japanese he's trying to mix in um with and he's actually not trying to mix in with the the culture per se he's trying to mix in with the community so that he can get close to the secret lair of of the bad guy um and in order to you know, he has to be in disguise to do it well there's a trigger warning for that um and apparently that's because of the cultural appropriation stereotype things of that nature and here's how i always felt about that now with with bond being made to look japanese even he may makes reference to it about how he, he thought he kind of looked ridiculous like he just <laughs> like i'm not really going to be able to pull this off i don't really look you know, i mean it was it, you know, he could tell it was just, it was very superficial, um, what, what they could do, but, but through the making of that movie, when I was younger, even to this day, I watch, when I watch that movie in no way have I ever felt that they were making fun of the Japanese culture or trying to stare, be stereotypical of the Japanese culture. Um, they were trying to be educational at the time of the culture at that time and yes at that time in the culture it was very male dominant um, a lot of times wives would even have to walk behind their husbands um, in in the culture um, nobody shaked hands it was a it was a bow um, out of respect and courtesy so there was a lot of customs back then they're not the custom now because um, it's more of, of modern culture and, and a mix of, of other countries and their cultures now. But um, in that movie, it felt like they were trying to make you respect their culture. And, and they even kind of tried to portray it as these were the cultural people these people they were the ones that had culture and, and i remember um tiger saying even to bond um at one point saying hey you're you're actually kind of a cultured person for a european um and and that's because 
Japanese culture back then probably looked at other other countries and their cultures as as not being at a higher level that they were at. So so and and I got that feeling through that movie that the the Japanese culture was kind of at a higher level and and it was something that Bond respected and um wanted to learn more about and they were trying to teach us about and help us to respect it, see the beauty of things and so but now now it's it's viewed as offensive and I feel like that label gets thrown on things when it really wasn't the intent um, of a number of things. So, so, but that's where we're at. We're with some Bond movies having trigger warnings. Now, if, if I were to pick one that, that may have some trigger warning on it, probably the man with the golden gun, but Sheriff is literally using some pretty derogatory terms. Now, it's the buffoon, it's the comedy relief, it's the village idiot, so to say, that is using those terms. So it's obvious that just like, yeah, yeah, um, the only the only one that would be using these terms so so loosely like this would be the buffoon. Um, and so it's not, it's portrayed in such a way to where, yeah, I mean, somebody's using some derogatory terms in the movie, but he is definitely not being highlighted as a hero for it. Um, he's just being seen as, as the idiot and oops, I keep hitting my mic. Sorry. So, um, that one maybe, yeah, I could kind of see cause there's, there's actual words of, of, uh, racism in there. But, um, I don't know. I feel like this is being applied really loosely. So let's get back. Let's get back to one quick item because I saw another article that talked about, you know, what, you know, do we really need these trigger warnings? And um, my question in that regard is, why are there trigger warnings? Is it truly to protect somebody? Are there trigger warnings out there to protect someone? Hey, be careful. Don't watch this because if you get triggered by something, you know of this nature. Yeah. You don't want to watch this because this, this will send you off the deep end and um, you may not survive. I mean, honestly, are trigger warnings saving anybody? No, no, because um, really what a trigger warning is, what a, what a content warning is, is that's, that's for the complainers. That's literally, it's, it's for the complainers. So those who issue these warnings, what they're really saying is, hey, all you complainers out there, we don't want to hear it. Yeah, we, we don't want to hear your complaints. Um, if you get triggered by this, guess what? We warned you. We warned you that this content was in there. So, so now that you've been warned, if, you're, if you really get triggered uh, by any of this content, um, you can complain, but it's going to fall on deaf ears because we, we, we warned you. So really these trigger warnings aren't to protect anybody, um, other than those who actually issue the warnings. Uh, it's to protect them legally from somebody saying, Hey, you, you, you offended me. Oh, well, well, I mean, we warned you, we warned you this could be offensive. Um, it's, it's so basically it's kind of like legal nonsense at this point to have these, to, to be issuing these trigger warnings. And uh, it's literally to take away the, the complaint desk, um, take that out of the process. And so they, they don't have to deal with it. And when you really think about it, who's complaining? Uh, these movies have been out there forever. And the only ones really complaining about it is probably this tiny minuscule number of people compared to those who are just like, just like, yeah, yeah, they can just shrug it off. Like there's a, there is so much content out there that is allowed. That really is truly offensive to, to a lot of people out there. Even, I mean, and we're talking today's standards. Um, but, um, but it's given complete free 
and wide birth. I mean, it's, it can, you know, it can happen and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. And it can be, it could be very offensive, but I'm kind of of that generation where I don't get triggered. I, I don't get triggered. Um, if something offends me, I can just be like, eh, whatever. I mean, I, I grew up being made fun of, uh, for a number of different things. One was religion, my religion. And, um, you know, I remember being called all kinds of names because of my religion and stuff. And sometimes, sometimes I would, I would go and get in somebody's face about it. And I'd be real, uh, I, because for one thing, it just, it was every day, every, you know, you could put up with so much and then pretty soon, yeah, you're going to, you're just going to be like, listen, you know, you, you want to keep this up. Let's, let's just settle this here and now. And then usually, you know, what, you know, what had happened was, you know, somebody would, would back off. There's, oh man, sorry, man. You know, um, and, um, but I mean, if that was so rare to, and, you know, and, and just growing up, through through the 80s the 90s and it's just you didn't hear that word trigger ah uh, yeah this is oh man boy that really triggered me that's like I, I don't know why um the generation today is just so easily and so fast to be triggered and and sometimes i'll even be i'll go into the office or something and i hear the the younger generation and they're just kind of talking like like, oh, you know, my anxiety, my anxiety is so high, or, or this really triggers my anxiety. And, so, and these are young people. Um, why, why are the young so anxious? I mean, um, as I've gotten older, my nerves have become, you know, a lot more sensitive. And yeah, I, I get some anxiety, I get some stress and, um, panic attack kind of kind of stuff from now now and then but that happened because i got got old uh but this younger generation is starting out with it by the time they're old i really fear for them because yeah, if this is how they're starting out i mean you have no idea in 30 years my goodness you have no idea just how raw your nerves are going to be <laughs> so I'll tell you, if, if you can't handle it now, I really fear for um, some of these younger people and the anxiety and stress that they, they feel. Um, so I, I don't know if it's coping mechanisms aren't there like they used to be or um, on quite honestly, I think social media has played a huge role in, in that um, and all kinds of misinformation and division being caused out there and just... I, I think it's all tied to social media because that's something my generation didn't grow up with. And it is a stressful thing that um, we didn't, we didn't have to worry about. So that's to me, that's kind of what I feel it is anyway. Um, so what do you think? What do you think bond movies having a trigger warning? Um, I wanted to get this video out there. Uh, it probably won't get as many views as, as some of the, the, higher um subscribed channels in the bond community who who will probably address this uh, later as well but um but this is this is the future of the bond movies and probably from this point on there's going to be a trigger warning um on there and and um and then you know most people will watch it and just be like uh what what was the warning about they, they won't even realize just like what what was i being warned about there's nothing nothing there so we'll see you in the next video tell me what you think and uh, uh let me know your comments all right